For more, let's cross to regional correspondent Bastien Renouille. Bastien, what's the latest? Good evening. Well, I can tell you that the fighting continues at the moment in Khartoum. I was on the phone with a doctor living in the city of Bari. Uh, it's located just on the opposite bank of uh, the Nile. It's also called Khartoum North. And she was saying that uh, she could see, still uh, see uh, planes in the sky bombing several parts of the city, uh, several parts of the city that uh, the army believes that they are belonging to the Rapid Support Forces. But she was saying that the Rapid Support Forces members uh, are in the streets. Uh, they they are everywhere in the neighborhood, that they are controlling many streets around, that it's still impossible to leave uh, her house, uh, and that the army uh, is bombing several uh, areas that are belonging to civilians. And she was wondering why are they targeting a civilian's neighborhood instead of targeting the um, Rapid Support Forces members living in the streets? That's a question that many people are asking. When I talk to them in Khartoum, they are very wor worried at the moment because they see that more and more uh, civilians' neighborhoods are being targeted by the uh, airstrikes. So you understand that the fighting in uh, the capital city continues tonight, especially in the city center close to the presidential palace, uh, where the uh, fighting has been very intense all uh, day long. So millions of people are still stranded in the apartments in Khartoum without water, without food, without access to electricity for some of them. So that's the situation in Khartoum. Let's also mention the situation in the Darfur region. It seems that uh, during the past days, uh, the situation was really quiet in the cities of El Fashir and Nyala, two of the main cities in the Darfur region. But the city of uh, El Jenina has been under intense fighting from uh, the rapid support forces and their allied uh, local militias. Um, people on the ground tell me that at least 200 people were killed during the past uh, days in this city and uh, that the city is still under the control of the rapid support forces at the moment. Thousands of civilians would like to escape to uh, reach uh, neighboring uh, um, Chad, but it's not possible at the moment because the roads are under the control of the rapid support forces. So many people are still stranded within the city. So you understand that uh, tonight the fighting continues in uh, several places around Sudan. Picking up on what that doctor told you, Bastien, this seems that we're into the fourth week of fighting now to confirm uh, what appears to be a trend where uh, the regular army has the heavy weaponry and the RSF uh, basically uh, mixes in with the local population. Exactly. People I call it a guerrilla now, actually. Uh, what's happening in Khartoum? Um, the rapid support forces are hiding into residential neighborhoods, trying to avoid uh, the airstrikes coming uh, from the uh, army. They're uh, firing back with anti-aircraft artillery, but it's still very difficult to understand what exactly uh, the situation is on the ground, given that both uh, the uh, army and the rapid support forces are actually in a communication war at the moment. They're both uh, publishing uh, statements, conf conflicting statements, saying that they are in control of uh, these buildings, these institutions, this area of cartoon and then the other published another statement saying the opposite. It's very difficult to understand what exactly the situation is on the ground. Uh, General uh, Hemeti said uh, yesterday that he believes that he can win this war, that uh, his uh, troops are um, powerful enough to beat uh, the army. But in another statement, the army said that it had uh, reduced the, uh, the number of men of the rapid support forces by at least 50 percent. So you understand that it's very difficult to understand exactly what's happening on the ground. Whether in Khartoum or in Darfur or in North Kordofan, the situation is very difficult to understand. Yes, yeah, South Sudan announcing that uh, an another ceasefire, this one promised for seven days, to go in effect from Thursday. Yes, and it's very difficult for civilians living in Khartoum and in many of the places in Sudan to believe that there will be uh, a ceasefire coming anytime uh, soon. They say that they cannot trust the military anymore. So it's uh, not the first ceasefire during the past uh, two weeks. Uh, this one was brokered by the IGAD, the Intergovernmental Authority uh, for Development. It's a local uh, regional East African organization trying to um, implement peace and to develop the countries of the region. Um, three of the 
region presidents, uh, president of Kenya, of South Sudan, and of Djibouti, were mandated to go to Khartoum to organize talks between Emeti and Burhan, the head of the Rapid Support Forces and the head of the, uh, the army. Uh, it failed till now. So uh, we know that uh, since last week, South Sudan has been trying to organize meetings in Juba, the capital of South Sudan, that the army said uh, last week that it was uh, ready to go to uh, South Sudan to talk with uh, Rapid Support Forces. But it's uh, difficult to understand if there will be any uh, improvement of the situation anytime soon, because the army also said several times that uh, it was not going to negotiate with the Rapid Support Forces before the dissolution of the uh, RSF. And also, Hemeti said uh, yesterday during uh, this interview that he believes that he can win this war and that there is no reason for him to negotiate. So uh, the civilians are uh, able to reach in Khartoum all are all telling me that uh, they do not believe that a ceasefire can it happen anytime soon and that the only thing that they are expecting for the next days is just more fighting either in the capital or in the region of Darfur. Bastien Hanoui, many thanks for that live update. We'll be talking more about it in the next hour.